What is up everybody? Gary Simon here. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do this. Let us refresh. Kind of, uh, you can use this like for a interesting like loader or the techniques you're going to use in order to learn how to do this, you can apply to many other things, not just text reveal animations. You could do certain cool things like with uh, hover states, like on cards, you can app apply the same thing sort of to uh, photographs or, or anything really. So uh, we're gonna be using Greensock Animation Platform or GSAP, otherwise known as that. Um, and we're also gonna use a little a JavaScript library called Split Type. I'll show you exactly how to do this. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, not that difficult, but you can really add really cool interactions and animations to your UIs. All right, as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so here I am in Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and create an index.html. Um, we're also gonna uh, hit the exclamation point enter just to get some initial CS or HTML, not CSS. I just woke up. Uh, and we're gonna link right here. Just type link enter for an Emmet abbreviation. Saves time typing. And we're gonna type CSS main.css right here. Um, for document, yeah, let's just change the title to text reveal or something like that. Um, let's create that CSS folder that we just referenced and we'll create a main.css file. We don't have to use SAS for this. There's only a few rule sets, quite easy. All right, HTML time. Very, again, very easy for this demo. We're just gonna put a header element and just put an H1 in here and that's that. And the H1, we're going to say Gary Simon. And because um, I'm gonna put Gary dot Simon just to be trendy or cool, I'm not. Uh, for the H1 though, uh, just just to foreshadow what's gonna happen in the future, we're gonna give this an ID of my hyphen type Gary, come on, type text, just like that. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to reference this in JavaScript once you get to the very simple JavaScript that's gonna come up here. But first, before we get to that, let's go ahead and go to main.css. Um, actually, let's right click open with live server. There's a live server extension. You can install it over here. Uh, let's do that. Come on, come on, there we go. Very ugly, all right. Um, and so now for our CSS, we're gonna take our body, you know what, I like it, you know, we don't even have to reference the body element. I'm always messing with the body, like removing the margin and stuff. We don't have to do that for this demo. So we're just gonna say header, and we're gonna use display grid, place content center. I, what that'll do is get that into the center, but we also want it in the middle as well, vertically. Uh, so we just put in height, 100 viewport height, because we have to give that header element a height of 100% or 100 viewport height. So there we go. Um, and then after that, we just have our H1 element. Very simple, font size. We're gonna beat this thing up, I'm telling you. Seven rem units. Uh, we're also going to uh, text transform this to uppercase. We're also gonna take font family and we're gonna say Bebas Nue, new. I think it's new. Um, I have that installed on my computer already. That's a Google font. You can um, import that if this is a serious project. Um, we're also gonna go ahead and I, we're gonna give it, well, we're gonna leave these two properties out for now because I wanna show you something um, when we actually start animating it. I, so this is the end state, you know, uh, before the animation or after the animation occurs, this is what we want it to look like, right? Right, all right. So. Let's go ahead and work on the actual animation part. Now, of course, you could do this uh, with CSS, pure CSS only, um, but assuming this sort of like some type of like interesting loader, or again, you can use this in a million different contexts, you're probably gonna be using animation in other place, places of your 
uh, website and, and interesting animations like sequence or step animations and stuff like that. Might as well just use the library for that called uh, GSAP or GreenSoc, the GreenSoc animation platform GSAP acronym. Um, and what I do is I type a GSAP3 CDN, all right, because we want to import this. Uh, of course, you could use NPM or Yarn to install if you have like a more robust application, like with React or React, View, Angular, whatever. Um, and we're just going to copy the script tag right here, and we're going to paste it right there. All right. So I uh, Control B to get rid of the sidebar. By the way, um, now I'm going to write our JavaScript in here. And before we do this, because we want each letter or each character to animate independent of the other ones, we have to have a way to break this up into individual or to give each one of these characters their own little HTML element. All right, now we could do that with vanilla JavaScript, but of course somebody already created one for us and that is called split type. All right, so if I go to split type, I type that in, we can see there's split type uh, from the node package manager. It has installation, usage, all that good stuff. All right, so what this will do is I, when we target this element right here, it's gonna look at all the characters inside of it and assign them their own HTML element from which each one has a class that we can then animate with GSAP, okay? So I, the way we do that, uh, there's a CDN, uh, there's a, there's a um, easy way to import right here. It is this right here. This is from installation from that split type uh, page that we just looked at. All right, so now we can start writing our JavaScript underneath. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to gain, uh, to, is to create a new instance of split type based on this my text ID. So to do that, we're gonna say const my text equals new split type and we just put in the ID or the class or the HTML element itself uh, as a selector. So we're gonna use the ID of my text. All right, and then we can use uh, GSAP or GreenSoc, because right now nothing's gonna happen. We haven't animated anything. Uh, so we're gonna say GSAP2. Now, if you have never used uh, GSAP or GreenSoc, I have a bunch of videos on it. I on the YouTube channel. So go to my YouTube channel, search and type in GreenSock or, or GSAP3 or something like that. And you'll find uh, probably several crash, cor cor crash courses. The one you want is for GSAP3, that's been the latest one. All right, uh, so the, it has a to and a from method. So um, the first uh, parameter that we specify as a part of this to method or the from method, depending on which one you wanna use, uh, it's gonna be the selector. So before we actually do that to the selector, I what we want to do is let's come out here. I uh, let's look at our situation here. Now let's I uh, get out the dev uh, F12 or Control Shift I, and now look at this. When we created that constant of uh, my text, it split. Let's zoom up. So here's our H1 element right here. Now it also creates a line and a word and a individual character. So you can see the G A R Y right here in this section. So notice the class it gives by default is char or for character. All right. So that's going to be the element we want to specify. So gsap dot two char class, and then because we're using the the two method, whatever the the default um, properties of this element or each of these characters it's gonna to go to whatever we specify. You could also put from right here, by the way, and you can make it uh, from whatever these values are and it'll go to whatever the default values are. So it all depends on your needs. We're gonna use two, all right? And we're gonna say uh, Y zero. So Y is vertical, up and down, and we're gonna set that to zero because in our CSS, we're going to hide it essentially, if that makes sense, you'll see. Um, we're gonna say stagger at 0 0.05. Now what that means is I, if we don't put stagger on here, they're all going to move up at the same time. This is kind of like an offset for each one uh, that it finds as a part of the character class. All right, so we're gonna say delay. Uh, we're just gonna 
put like a 0.2 second delay on this whole animation from occurring. Uh, and then we're gonna put duration uh, 0.1. I think that'll be good. Now, here's the thing. I, when we start this and we refresh, nothing happens because we're not moving anywhere. We're putting Y zero, but the Y uh, is already zero by default from, from each one of these elements. So we're gonna come here to our CSS. We're gonna say character or char. We're gonna say transform, translate Y, 115 pixels, all right? And then we're also going to put transition, transform, 0.5 seconds. All right, let's refresh. All right, that's what that looks like. I actually really like it. But we wanna hide it down here, all right? So to do that, I, what we would do is, I always use this uh, uh, Clippy CSS uh, Clip Path Maker. Go to Google, type Clippy CSS, that's the fastest way, or put it in your bookmarks, which I haven't done. Uh, we're gonna do trapezoid, just uh, four corners. And this is all we want. We wanna reveal everything by default, and then we're gonna use that transform, uh, translate Y, 115 pixels, to push it out of that clip path. So what the clip path does is whatever the viewable areas is, I, let's see here. I could show you, um, like if we were to take this and push it like that, it would cut our text in half, like in, in an interesting way. Right now we just wanna reveal, reveal all of it and push the text that's currently in here, push it down by 115 pixels outside of this clip path, this little mask that we're creating. And that's, that way we don't see it uh, ultimately and then it'll move up into view. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So um, what we'll do is, I forgot to copy that. Um, we'll copy this and we're gonna put that right here and then save. Now let's go back. Look at that. Now one thing I kind of, what the hell happened? One thing I don't like is notice it starts here, but it moves up quite high. It's, it's like there's a gap from wherever that was. Um, what we can do is adjust the default line height because we have a, a big font right here. Uh, and I had to experiment with the value. 5.9 looked pretty good. And now it brings it up closer. So if I save it, it's like right there at the edge. Now, of course, you could do other cool things. Like for instance, if you want to reverse, I. Uh, like maybe we'll put negative 115 pixels. We do that and hit refresh, it's gonna come from the top. Now of course there's a lot of other things you could do to vary this uh, and, and uh, you, could, you could screw around with the, the green sock easings right here, which affect how the animation plays between each character. Uh, and of course possibilities, like I mentioned, are endless. Uh, you could put these on card backgrounds, website backgrounds, you could put them on uh, hover effects and all that really cool stuff. All right, awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, of course, make sure to subscribe up here. Make sure to leave a like, a comment, all that good, boring stuff. Uh, also, check out designcourse.com if you wanna learn UI, UX, and also uh, the upcoming interactive CSS course uh, is gonna be there as well. So, as always, I'll see you soon, and goodbye. Yeah.